Today's Tuesday, January the 10th. I find that I'm most inspired by YouTube videos where people talk about the things that they're really passionate about, so when I try to pick books, I try to pick books that I really love. And so today I wanted to really push myself to pick something that I really truly love, even though it's going to be difficult to talk about successfully. So this might end up being kind of a long video, but I really hope it's worth your while because today I am talking about my all-time favorite book, and it's a book that I know a lot of people don't love. It's Moby Dick by Herman Melville. First of all, let's let's just address this issue right now. So the cover of this one sucks. Uh, the content is still truly amazing. If you don't like the cover of this book, I assure you, all you have to do is do a little bit of digging, and you will probably find one with a cover at least as good as my t-shirt. Notice the great big whale here, and uh, the ship and the awesomeness that is this shirt. This is my Moby Dick shirt, and I love it, and you should love it too. And if you're going to read this book, you should find one with a cover as cool as this, um, or just buy the $2 version and enjoy it anyway, because it's what's inside that counts, right? Moby Dick is by many people considered the great American novel. By other people, it's considered a big pile of poop. And um, I understand where both sides are coming from. Hmm. Herman Melville wrote Moby Dick in 1851 um, at a time when America was trying to sort of define itself, uh, both philosophically, politically, and uh, most especially in literature. I believe that when he originally published the book, he got rejected quite a lot. Publishers were, were not really willing to take a risk on this book, and, and many people suggested that it, it was too much of just a manual on whaling. Like, why do you need to have a chapter on how a harpoon works? They felt that this was a weird book, and they're not entirely wrong. The, the average person who reads this book has to be prepared for uh, long chapters of basically non-fiction description of whaling. And if that's not something that you're willing to, to read, then be prepared to be very frustrated with this book. There's a great deal of, of complex thinking required to, to really appreciate Moby Dick, and that's why I love this book so much. So, uh, the book is a, it's told by the protagonist. His name is Ishmael. And uh, the book opens the very first sentence of the book, Call Me Ishmael. Ishmael is the, the narrator, and he's a young guy who decides that he wants to go whaling. He's growing up in the town of Nantucket, where this is the primary industry for everybody. If you wanted to have light as you read, as you wrote, as you worked at night, you needed to burn something, and you wanted something that would burn well and not smell terrible and kind of not be smoggy and gross and disgusting, and so whale oil was found to be very good for this. Uh, whale oil was also also good for perfume, and so people used it for many of these different purposes, and it became extraordinarily valuable. So people moved to Nantucket and were able to make a very good living by whaling if they could survive going out and doing the job. There was the possibility that perhaps you could be killed by a whale, and that's what Moby Dick is all about. It's hard to say that Ishmael is the protagonist of the book. The captain of the ship is Ahab, and if you've ever been exposed to any popular culture, you probably know who Ahab is. He's the captain of the Pequod. He is the guy who is hell-bent on hunting and killing Moby Dick the White Whale. That's the that's the overall plot of the book. And there's nothing super complicated to this. You're going to you're going to meet the cast, you're going to kind of learn a little bit about whaling, you're going to learn about why they're out there, you're going to learn about why Ahab is so insistent that they have to kill the whale, and then and then that's when things start to get interesting. Um, there's a whole bunch of just incredible things that he's trying to do that, that leave you with so much to think about well after you're done this big, fat, heavy book. Leviathan is the term that, that Moby Dick, or that Herman Melville uses to refer to the whale a lot. Leviathan is this massive beast that is thought to swim among the oceans. In some satanic circles, Leviathan is considered one of four demons that serves Satan. Just imagine growing up in a world that didn't have National Geographic, that didn't have, like, scuba gear, that whales would be terrifying. 
Captain Ahab really views Moby Dick as the embodiment of Satan, and he's going out and he wants to hunt this thing. If he can conquer the whale, then his life has meaning, that he's a truly great and powerful man who can be redeemed for everything else. There's also the, the fact that Moby Dick is white. We don't have to have a, a especially rich understanding of racism to recognize that associating whiteness with purity is not healthy. But of course, literature has a long history of doing this, that, that whiteness is associated with purity. You know, angels, they, they're all in white, and, and you know, if God shows his face to people, it's, it's this white light, and it's all these other kinds of things. And so Moby Dick, the association of, of Moby Dick's whiteness with divinity and with, with heaven, uh, that's really important because as the book unfolds and Ahab is driven to hunt and kill and kill and kill this whale, his obsession with killing the whale, who is the real devil? Is Moby Dick really bad? But then if he's white and he's pure, like, is Moby Dick really good? Like, what is Moby Dick? If Moby Dick is innocence and purity, then maybe Ahab is the opposite. Is Ahab perhaps representative of us as we go out and kill innocence and purity and nature? What if, what if we are currently killing God as we go out and hunt nature? Now, the other aspect of all of this that we should probably address is that there is another symbolic level to Leviathan, and that is the, the association with Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes was a philosopher of, around the time of the English Civil War. Thomas Hobbes argues that if there is no God, or at least if God doesn't operate in the way that people thought that he did, and that perhaps morality isn't something that is enforced by God and divinity and, you know, bad actions are immediately punished by God, if, if those things aren't, aren't there, uh, we need a different system of government, and we need to be ruled by what's good for human beings. He creates this metaphor that says that masses of people are like a leviathan, a, like one great big monster that needs to have a head that controls it. Countries uh, that are not ruled by a head are a danger to all of civilization, a danger to themselves, that, that they're just going to destroy uh, out of control. So when Herman Melville chooses to use the word Leviathan again and again and again in reference to the white whale, and this idea that Ahab is trying to conquer the white whale and, and take it and, and defeat it and, and suppress it and all of these other kinds of things, you have to kind of recognize that he's making sort of a metaphor for America. And Ahab is kind of like that one who wants to go out there and conquer and take it down and, and take away its, its freedom and its independence. Uh, and then, of course, you can also look at the fact that, that Moby Dick was written in response to Nathaniel Hawthorne, and you can go out and read the Scarlet Letter. When I read Moby Dick, when I think about Moby Dick, like, I love that I don't just, like, settle on this, like, simple answer. I love that there's still so many, like, important questions that I have. And, like, if you take the time to really think about it, if you take the time to really dig into it, um, you're never really done Moby Dick. And uh, that's why it is my all-time favorite book. Oh my god, this is the longest one ever.